and it is he who sends down rain from the sky and we produce thereby the growth of all things we produce from it greenery with which we produce grains arranged in layers and from the palm trees of its emerging fruit are clusters hanging low and we produce gardens of grape vines and olives and pomegranates similar yet varied look at each of its fruit when it yields and at its ripening indeed in that are signs for a people who believe verily my prayer my sacrifice my living and my dying are for allah the lord of the alamin we are alive in what is called the age of information and now it might even be a tsunami of information since we have the ai more and more people are getting into research because they want to be sabik in their fields they want to be distinguished scholars in their respective fields not to make allah happy but to go ahead of their peers they are in that competition they feel the need and the push of being better than those around them because of the competition that is growing on them so let's talk about some of their knowledge and some of their discoveries let's get into the henek debate of dopamine why because the western society is in dire need of something to blame their destruction upon so they have discovered something called dopamine and it's all over the place everywhere you go you hear about dopamine right let's talk about dopamine because it's trending everyone is talking about it and so should we well to start with dopamine has existed since the time brains have existed and brains have existed since the existence of adam and it was even present at the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in none of the revelations was jibril alaihi salam recorded talking about neurotransmitters sometimes researchers who are hell bent upon finding something or discover something new some great facts or fiction out of science just because they have the license to makes me feel as if they are like kharijis who shoot right past the target through the bullseye and right across missing the point completely sometimes it seems they are doing so much research because they have nothing else to do i will talk about dopamine and delayed gratification and why delayed gratification is so important but i also have a few questions in my mind why did none of the prophets have so much information we've seen the first prophet we've seen the last prophet we've seen all the scriptures and none of them knew the things that we know now yet their deen was complete allah was happy with them they were complete successful human beings and we despite the fact that we know so much we are nowhere near them in caliber in our belief in our gratitude in good deeds we are nowhere near we are not even as submissive as they were 
although knowledge should be increasing us in humility and submission so it seems that we are all following a fashion of getting knowledge more and more knowledge more and more and more knowledge or some of us might be aspiring to get recognized for the knowledge we have in dunya some might be aspiring to have a higher position in their prestigious institutions some might have the aspiration of getting medals or even the nobel prize so it's become fashionable to acquire knowledge to make podcasts to talk about knowledge and then get more knowledge and then talk about that knowledge so it's a vicious cycle of knowledge that we are all getting caught up in because it's trending we are doing it but is it beneficial knowledge and what is beneficial knowledge beneficial knowledge is the knowledge that softens the heart and mind towards submission to the will of allah beneficial knowledge is the knowledge that will take us to janna beneficial knowledge is the knowledge that helps us recognize allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the fact that this knowledge about how many neurotransmitters we have how many neurons a child is born with what is the role of dopamine in our lives the ashra mubashra had no clue the greatest women of islam they didn't know about it the greatest men of islam didn't know about it they were still obedient and submissive look at the walk of hazrat musa and khidr they did not discuss science there are records of discussions of musa alay salam with allah subhanahu wa taala and there is no information regarding the neurotransmitters of a human being look at the example of how knowledge can corrupt someone rishi sunak the former prime minister of england the day he became prime minister he worshiped a cow so this shows that scientific knowledge is not absolutely necessary for us to become good human beings or good muslims and if allah needed science einstein would have been a prophet yusuf alay salam did not use science to interpret dreams musa alay salam did not use science to split the sea isa alay salam did not use science to cure the sick people no prophet needed science the more we are learning the more we are disbelieving i am not against science but i am against its abuse which is being done by hiding facts and revealing half truth and misusing information to use it as a weapon we have weaponized education and technology as the pursuit of money is replacing the pursuit of god acquiring knowledge is becoming the growing trend because pursuit of knowledge means pursuit of money and people are blindly blindly caught up in this rat race what will happen when they realize that they were fooled or tricked into believing that this is the right way when it isn't angels have knowledge taught by allah revelations were sent through angels angels know the secrets of allah and when jinn try to hear them they are hit with shahab saqib angels are also interested 
with the knowledge of carrying out important tasks like the good news of Zakaria or Ibrahim or Maryam having a son angels get the news before Ibrahim Zakaria or Maryam similarly angels descend with umur of Allah commands about what will be distributed among the human beings in Lailatul Qadr no one talks about dopamine from zamzam to kosar we do not hear about the neurotransmitters but if we do we should utilize every dot of the knowledge that we receive to increase in submission and humility towards allah subhanahu wa taala that's it that should be the purpose and intention of acquiring knowledge of any research that we glorify the praise and gratitude of allah subhanahu wa taala that should be the supreme goal of acquiring knowledge and doing any number of researches any number of phd's we should end up in more and more humility submission and gratitude just like allah subhanahu wa taala said to adam alayhi salam don't go near this tree in the quran we find that allah subhanahu wa taala has said don't go near adultery if this much knowledge is enough for a person to be obedient then he doesn't need any more information regarding how many synapses or axons or dendrites or white matter gray matter exists in the brain a child goes through so many bruises and cuts it's all part of growing up we don't need to learn about clotting cascades in order to treat those bruises and cuts at home it's okay even if parents don't know they don't have to become overwhelmed and they don't have to trust their doctors blindly because the doctors some of them if not all even in muslim countries are unfortunately blindly following the secular system of prescribing medication and it is growing very very alarming and i am really concerned that there are parents out there who might be listening to certain doctors who would prescribe antidepressants or anxiolytics or mood stabilizers to young children this shouldn't be happening dopamine or no dopamine your child does not need prescription of antidepressants please protect your children from such doctors who are blindly following the western terminology and methodology in everything they are over impressed by the west I am reminded of the story of the stupid king and the dressmakers. When the dressmakers were con artists and they traveled to the kingdom of a king they had heard was stupid. And they spread the word that they will create an extraordinary dress that only the most wise and the intelligent people will be able to see. So the story goes like this that they created a dress and they would sit down outside in the marketplace with needle and thread and they would act as if they are stitching something that nobody could see but nobody would dare to speak up for fear that they would be labeled as stupid So one day the word spread to the king's courtroom and the king decided to visit the dressmakers to prove how wise he is 
And when he reached the marketplace, he came across the dressmakers. When the dressmakers saw the king, they asked, Your Majesty, would you like to try it on? The king agreed because he was also too afraid to say that he could not see the dress because that would definitely prove that he was stupid. So he said that he would like to try it on and the dressmakers helped the king try it on. And when he came out half naked, the viziers could not dare to say that the king was naked. Rather, they started praising the dress and how beautiful it was, although there was no dress. They too were afraid to be caught as being stupid. They did not want to be labeled as stupid. They were trying to prove by not finding any dress yet admitting that there was a dress. They were just trying to prove how wise they were. So the king walked proudly, flaunting his dress, showing it off, till a child started laughing at him and started calling him naked. So this is the story and this is how I feel that we are all getting caught up in this rat race, in this hamster wheel of proving how wise we are, how educated we are. But let's pause and have a look at the Arabs of the pre-Islamic era. They were very eloquent people and they had a taste of high eloquence. Just like the academics of today, just like the people scientifically driven and making podcast after podcast and making documentaries and doing research, the Arabs had a high taste for eloquence and they loved and praised and kept in high regard anybody who wrote quality literature. So the Arabs were extremely eloquent people and if they existed today with the right tools, they would have done breakthroughs, they would have done groundbreaking researches. Arabs had a taste for poetry unlike any other nation that we have come across. Perhaps we can liken it with the Greeks' love for philosophy and the Western love for science. But science is only the science of Allah. Science is only a study of science of Allah. But look at the contrast. Look at the contrast that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought against them an Ummi prophet as clean as a child from a mother's womb. Ummi means a child that has come out of the mother's womb and has not acquired formal education. So Allah broke the trend. He went against the trend. We should not be dictated by trends. We should not be trend followers. If we cannot be trendsetters, the last thing we should do is become trend followers. At least we can try and stick to our core beliefs and realities and then try to set new standards, raise the bar, set new trends. We should not stoop low. We should not go down or compromise from our standards because we might end up being like the viziers of the stupid king. And we don't have to be that. And just because we don't understand what is dopamine, what is serotonin, all these things will only confuse you even more. As Muslims, we have faith in the unseen. If Allah wanted to reveal everything to us, for us to believe, we would have seen Allah by now. We would have seen the angels. We would have seen the jinn. We can't even see the germs. 
without the help of a microscope. We can't even see our own faces without the help of a mirror. So we have to accept our disabilities, our limitations, and we should humble ourselves and submit to the will of Allah. The whole universe is a sign of His existence. The Creator who created everything in a beautiful, perfect design that complements each other. Everything in the universe complements everything else. We can study science to see His signs. We can study and marvel at His signs through science. But we should not wait for science to prove that the Quran is right or that the Prophet ﷺ is right. You don't have to wait for science to prove that the Sunnah method is the best method. We have to follow it. The Sahaba followed intermittent fasting as a Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ even before there was research done to prove how great are the benefits of intermittent fasting. And today they are screaming at the top of their lungs about the benefits of what was the normal method of the life of the Prophet So we don't have to wait and get a green signal from science to follow Islam. We have to follow Islam whether we know the scientific backing of it or not. We have to follow the Quran and Sunnah. That's it. Allah defeats science with His kun. And we have seen it many times in the Quran. Allah changes the fire lit up to burn Ibrahim into a garden. Follow Allah, not the science. Yeah.